Hello, my name is David Allman. I am an emergency management student at West Texas A&M University. Today I will be presenting a case study on the BP oil spill of 2010 as part of my risk management class. On April 20, 2010, the Deepwater Horizon, an offshore drilling unit, incurred an explosion and fire approximately 40 miles southeast of the Louisiana coast. This explosion killed 11 workers and injured 16 others out of the 126 crew members on board. After burning for more than a day, the Deepwater Horizon sank on April 22, 2010. As a result of the blowout and explosion of the Deepwater Horizon, oil was able to flow freely from the Macondo well into the Gulf of Mexico without any way to immediately control it or way to shut it down. Oil flowed freely from the well for 87 days at a rate estimated at 62,000 barrels a day with a to total volume lost approximated at 4.9 million barrels or roughly 210 million gallons. In this video here, you will be able to see underwater footage taken by a remotely operated vehicle, ROV, at the side of the well on the seafloor. The Deepwater Horizon experienced several incidents during the time preceding the explosion. Just a month before the explosion, the drilling rig experienced sudden gas releases from the well, which would kick up the drill. Also, pipe fell into the well, and there were at least three reported occasions of the blowout preventer leaking fluid. There were many pre-explosion risks that were taken and warnings that were overlooked. In March 2008, the mineral rights to drill for oil at the Macondo well were purchased by BP. In February 2009, BP filed a 52-page exploration and environmental impact plan for the Macondo well with the Minerals Management Service. The plan stated that it was unlikely that an accidental surface or subsurface oil spill would occur from the proposed activities. On April 6, 2009, the Department of the Interior exempted BP's Gulf of Mexico drilling operations from a detailed environmental impact study after concluding that a massive oil spill was unlikely. On June 22, 2009, a senior drilling engineer at BP warns that the metal casing for the blowout preventer might collapse under high pressure. On October 7, 2009, the Transocean Marianas semi-submersible rig begins drilling at the Macondo well. November 9, 2009, Hurricane Ida damages Transocean Marianas enough that it has to be replaced. So on February 15, 2010, the Deepwater Horizon began drilling on the Macondo Prospect replacing the Transocean Marianas. In March 2010, an accident damages a gasket on the blowout preventer on the rig. On April 1, 2010, a Halliburton employee warns that BP's use of cement was against best practices. On April 6, 2010, Minerals Management Service issued a permit to BP for the well with the notation, Exercise Caution While Drilling Due to Indications of Shallow Gas and Possible Water Flow. April 9, 2010, BP drilled the last section of the wellbore at 18,360 feet below sea level, 
but the last 1,192 feet needed casing. Halliburton recommended a liner tieback casing that would provide four redundant barriers to flow. BP chose to do a single liner with fewer barriers that is faster to install and seven to ten million dollars cheaper. On April 15, 2010, Minerals Management Service approved amended permit for BP to use a single liner with fewer barriers. As you can see, there were several instances where warnings were heated The response to the oil spill was enormous. Federal agencies such as the U.S. Coast Guard, Minerals Management Service, and Environmental Protection Agency responded to the spill and coordinated containment and cleanup efforts with skimmer ships, floating booms, controlled burns, and oil dispersant. They were, these were quickly dispatched to the Gulf Coast. Despite the best containment efforts, oil eventually appeared on the shores of the Gulf Coast from Texas to Florida. As you can imagine, the impact of an oil spill this size was enormous. There is still data being gathered on the amount of damage done to the environment. The financial impact of this incident is still being calculated to the tune of billions of dollars. Shrimping and fishing activities were halted, tourism and real estate plummeted, as did BP stock prices. It is estimated that the entire economic cost of this incident is around $90 billion. In conclusion, I think we as a nation are better prepared and equipped to handle an incident of this type and magnitude again. Incidents such as these show us our strength and weaknesses during a response, which in turn better prepare us for the next one. I believe this incident also opened the eyes of many that were willing to sacrifice safety for money. Oil production is vital for the survival of many nations, and extracting this much needed oil is always going to be dangerous. After what we've learned from this incident, it is my hope that we can continue to produce and extract oil while having a minimal impact on our environment. If you'd like more information, please visit the U.S. Coast Guard information page related to the Gulf Coast restoration at www.restorethegulf.gov. Information can also be found on BP's website at www.bp.com. Thank you for your time.